So to just kick this off, um, I'm going to kind of introduce what the panel is, and then I'm actually probably going to, Brendan, if I might ask you to speak first, since it was you, since Move the Bytes was your uh, originally your undertaking. Um, uh, so. Uh, in November, I think as I mentioned in the, the initial track, uh, we formed a group to, to make data transfer awesome in IPFS. Um, the, it was called the Move the Bytes Working Group. Um, it was originally set up with a goal of replacing BitSwap as the default protocol in four months. Is that accurate? The, the, that was the original goal? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, we've been running this group now for a few months. We've actually gotten a lot done. Uh, there's been some amazing, amazing protocols demoed, built, lots of stuff. Um, uh, and now we're, but we, we haven't actually, there hasn't been a bit swap re replacement across the board yet. Uh, so I want to kind of just reflect on where we're at and how, what the process was like and where we're going next. So. Uh, I guess I would start, and I'd love to hear, like, Brendan, from you, like, what made you want to start this group? What, uh, what, like, what was it like running it? Um, what do you feel like went well, and what maybe do you think we could improve upon? So, yeah, is that a good intro? Go take it whatever That's direction. A great you want. intro. Totally. Uh, thanks, Anna. I, um, Hi, everybody. It's nice to see all of you. I deeply miss all of you, and I really wish I could be there in person. Um, and so hopefully you can hear me. If you can't, Hannah, interrupt me. But um, yeah, uh, move the bites. So I, I don't know that folks know the origin story behind this. We uh, Dig was about to go give a talk uh, at IPFS camp, and um, I was second, standing next to Carson Farmer from Textile. And we were like, you know what? We should stop complaining about this and just like, a lot, a number of us are working on this. And so we went around and just like quickly took a poll of a number of the folks who are in the room of like, hey, would you join this working group if we made one to like try and do something about our data transfer story? And uh, I believe we talked to some folks at Daghouse, some folks at Fission, some folks at uh, definitely a bunch of PL teams, folks like in multiple teams at PL. And everyone was like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's go working group. And so we jammed a slide in and uh, named it Move the Bytes in the like sort of 20 minutes before Dig went on stage and said, okay, cool, let's do it. And then we actually had the first meeting, I think that Sunday and just at IPFS camp, just to say, hey, can we gather some requirements to understand what this was? And really it, it definitely like uh, from the get-go, I was like very fired up to try and make a major community contribution in the form of getting us all to work together because um, I think I, I caught a little bit of Philip's talk. We have a lot of data transfer protocols. We have a lot of knowledge in our community around how to move bytes around. And it just seemed a lot, a lot of us have sort of like openly mused that like, it's kind of tragic that we're working on disparate things. Why don't we try and coordinate and work together and build one thing or fewer things? And so we started Move the Bytes uh, and we had numerous meetings and it became very quickly apparent that uh, it was going to be really hard to actually ship code. Like I basically just like threw together a timeline of like, cool, we're going to, and like try something more experimental with the working group thing, mainly because in other working groups, we'd sort of gotten this feedback that like, ah, we don't always get stuff done. Like what is the value of this working group? And if we're going to ask people to meet every two weeks and commit time to this, can we make sure that they get something out of it? And the thing I really wanted out of it was like better working code. Uh, and so that was the first couple of meetings. We sort of had this timeline that I kept posting up being like, cool, we're going to evaluate different options. We're going to go to like an implementation phase and then we'll, and then we'll choose a protocol and use that to be a replacement for BitSwap. And that kind of got softened and softened and softened over time. And really that was, you could see that as like, uh, not accomplishing our goal, but you could also see that as just like, that was sort of, uh, the needs of the community emerging at the same time, I think would be another uh, narrative where what I think we ended up with in Move the Bytes was a really nice place to do knowledge share outs on work that's been happening to date. And uh, I'm actually quite proud of the videos, like the recordings from those meetings uh, and the presentations that everybody gave. I thought it, we created a space for folks to really show some really interesting stuff. And I personally have been like affected by numerous talks given by numerous folks in those uh, working group calls. 
And so, yeah, the original purpose was like, heck yeah, we're all going to work together. We're going to ship some code, kumbaya. And the like ending spot was like, you know what? Maybe we should just have some space to listen to each other and be influenced by each other. I don't know if that's good or bad, but that seems to be what happened. And hopefully that's like a nice summary of, of where we ended up. Uh, and I'm going to stop rambling now, but does that, does that feel like it teased things up, Hannah? That totally cool. teased things up. Um, so uh, we're going to, uh, I think I'm going to, reflect a couple for a couple minutes on my own experience of move the bytes um and then martin seaman from the lib p2p team is going to do a couple minutes and then uh, the remainder of the panel is not a panel it's just a discussion uh particularly you, whether you are in the group or not feel free to contribute uh, <laughs> your reflections and uh we'll see where it goes i'm not gonna this is a Sort of like a retro, but not like I'm going to have like a pluses and deltas sheet going and we're not going to have. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just see what we learn. Um, yeah. So uh, my own uh, experience. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> It's hard to hard to start without mentioning that my first experience of Move the Bytes was I was running said data transfer track and I did not have the information that <laughs> the Move the Bytes group was going to be announced. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was a surprise to me, which was really exciting, though, um, because it because it was sort of uh, totally aligned with what I thought needed to happen um, was to get these different groups uh, working together. Um, uh, and I also, from the beginning, was a little skeptical of the four months around let's build a protocol in four months together that replaces BitSwap, um, and I think. Part of the reason that didn't happen is I think we actually revealed some ch some things that were inherent problems in an endeavor like that. Um, and I think that in that res uh, that that's not actually a fault. That doesn't again to like Brendan's point. That actually was a strength of the process um, uh, as opposed to like oh we didn't you know we didn't replace BitSwap, uh, which at the end of the day isn't probably the most important goal. Um, I think we really, and some things that I saw coming out is that people's, uh, similar to the, to, to the talk that Philip just gave, like people's use cases dictate how they want to move data to an extent that, is, is, that makes it hard to have an, a single mega protocol. Um, and, uh, you know, like we quickly came up against some people really wanted to just move blocks and other people had other needs. Um, uh, and, and I think that, I think it was useful to start to identify all the different concerns that kind of come out um, around data transfer that aren't just like, how do we technically move this data, you know, quick, quickest. Um, the, the other thing that I think it, it is challenging about, act, like, I don't think this is really a solved problem in our ecosystem, but like how do we work together across teams um, where teams are like actually potentially different companies? Um, it's hard enough within like a large, different teams in a large organization like Protocol Labs, but like we have here a truly a network where many of the teams are their own entities. Um, and it's tricky because everyone has like their priority list in a work stream and a manager who has said, these are the things you got to get done. Um, and it can be very, like, it's not 100% clear how to, like, mix that up um, across organizations. So I thought that was really interesting. I thought, again, that, that Brendan, you're completely right. The, um, the things that I learned just watching people talk about, you know, what they're doing was so, so, so like, it, like, enlightening. And I've been, like, working on this stuff for, like, four years. Um, uh, just new ideas, new like techniques. Um, it's, it's fascinating to know, to realize how much people actually are reading uh, each other's code and trying to figure out what they're doing, what we're doing. And that it's nicer when like <laughs> we actually explain it to each other. Um, so I thought that was really amazing. Um, I hope that, that, you know, I, when the question of like, what are we going to, are we going to continue to move the bytes? I, I, I'm not sure we're going to, you know, have it run indefinitely, but I do hope that, it, that, you know, maybe, as needed, maybe we need to have these sorts of knowledge shares because it was it was quite quite cool. Um, yeah, those that was my experience of it. Um, I want to hear from Martin. What was yeah. what? How did you get involved? What did you what did you think of what was produced? And yeah, yeah, I, I was there in, in, in Lisbon, and we had this we had this big meeting around around the table with Juan and and everyone and. We didn't really know what we were doing. We just 
collecting this list of requirements like what what should the what should the new uh, what should the new protocol do and one, one thing I was very happy about to see was that a lot of people were were advocating for making this HTTP compatible um, just because there's um, like th that's one thing I'm, I'm excited about because there's a lot of um, existing infrastructure around for for HTTP right with with like load balancing and and, and caching um, so building something that that works um, that works both on top of of what we have in lib P2P but can also be applied um, on top of HTTP um, was very encouraging um, for me and I made a proposal um, for that later during during the working group um, another thing I found really interesting um, in, in the discussions that we had in in the meetings was that we tried to come up with a, a benchmarking solution and we say like okay we have we now have like BitSwap and we benchmark this against the other protocols. And I mean, this, this, is, this is already a little bit, bit problematic because you're, you're, not uh, you're not benchmarking a protocol, you're benchmarking an implementation and that implementation might not be um, the most performant implementation of, of that protocol. Um, but then the, the, the interesting thing was, is like I, I, I didn't have the impression that we, that we could agree on um, what the what the data should look like that we are transferring because this is so much informed by um, what you're working on in your in your day to day um, what your day to day use case of this would be that you, that everybody had very different um, uh, different ideas of how our benchmarking data set uh, should look look like. Yeah, it was, it was super. Did you? Can I? I'm curious. The libp2p team, you guys built the HTTP on libp2p. We did. We'll, we'll demo it tomorrow. Yeah. Was that partly inspired by the group? Were you planning to do that already? or? It was um, a, a mix of both. Yeah. 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 I think that I mean, that project is one of the coolest things that I've <laughs> encountered uh, from you. the libp2p team in a while. And it's, it, essentially, it just, it, it, you know, it, it solves a problem, which is like, can I, if you want to write request response, like, can I write it once and have it run on libp2p and, you know, traditional IP systems? Uh, and essentially, the solution is if you write an HTTP protocol, you can run it on libp2p and also over, you know, a traditional web client, which uh, is always a big barrier to entry when you get into, like, the mobile world where you're not going to be running libp2p. Um, so let that be an advertisement to the talk tomorrow. <laughs> What time is that? You're asking the hard questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, I thought yeah. that was really interesting. And also, it's interesting because we didn't, we didn't ultimately like ship an HTTP protocol. But I mean, that group for me, like, actually convinced me to be like an HTTP believer. I was one of the like holdouts of like, you know, we've got to only use libp2p. And uh, I think it was, it, was, it, was a, it was a really interesting group to talk about real world use cases. Um, I, I would love to open up the floor to uh, raise your hand here if you participated in the Move the Bytes work group. I love it. Yes, that's so cool. Uh, did anybody, I'm curious, did anybody not attend the meetings but watch them later? See? Yeah, that is super cool. I, uh, so, so this is a, a panel, uh, but it's sort of a fake panel because we're not trying to, uh, you know, just talk at you for the remaining time. Um, so I would actually love to open up the floor to anyone who is in the group sharing anything that worked really, that you, that you do. So I'll, I'll ask the question this way. Uh, what happened in the group that was really valuable to you? Or what happened in the group that, looking back, maybe we could have done, we could have done it a little differently? Um, and for the AV folks in the back, um, if you don't mind walking around with the microphone to folks who are speaking uh, so that you can get it onto the recording. Yes? Thumbs up? Cool. Anybody want to get started? Just, I, I guess just raise your hand and they'll take the microphone over to you. Yeah. So uh, one thing that I found really interesting that didn't get 
too far, I think, was um, that uh, you mentioned it, I think, just now, Martin, um, the defining different test data sets and then actually testing them because there's a huge difference between like transferring a large video file or transferring the Linux kernel with like, I don't know, 20,000 small files or transferring um, some deeply nested uh, graph data structure. And um, yeah, I think that's something that uh, uh, could be taken further to like create some test data sets and then actually um, try them on different protocols and see how it fares to kind of both inform like the, the high and low points of different approaches and maybe um, improve, improve upon that. And I think that's, yeah, um, like, like having these measurements, even if it's difficult and you're benchmarking implementations and not protocols and so on, but I, think, I still think that that could inform some further developments very much. Yeah, uh, to, to yeah, add to this, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a lot more, more, more complicated than just defining uh, a data set that's like a video file or a lot of small files, right? You can also have the, the case where, um, do, do you want to, to benchmark multi-party transfers? Do you have like a data set which is already replicated pretty well between the two nodes and you just want to do a sync operation? Like there's, there's a, a lot of different, different dimensions to this problem. Uh, and can, I jump, can I jump in on that? Yeah, for sure. I was going to just ask you what it was like to run those benchmarks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think I want to point to a, a sort of broader pattern here because I think that question really invites uh, part of what I was seeing at the beginning and part of the experience that I left with uh, working on working sort of like on trying to shepherd the group. Because I think we got this sense that everybody agrees, yeah, we should have a set of basically data set test fixtures, right? We should have those. And, it, and uh, our team put in a lot of effort to try and collect those things and to try and build really frictionless. Um, but my, my perception was that like, okay, maybe it's, this is just sort of an organizational challenge. Like someone needs to put the energy into setting up a place where we can sort of have a common um, test ground to like actually run the, some of these simulations or at least establish some like, and so the first plan was like, okay, cool. We'll, we'll gather the text, text fixtures and we'll start to like define a thing that can actually run and compare these protocols. That turned out to be way too hard <laughs> and, and lowering, but more importantly, we actually published a guide to say, hey, here's how you submit your protocol for testing. Here's a, a rundown on how that'll work. And that guide was too complicated and nobody took us up on it. And we get the same thing where it's like, yeah, it'd be really nice. Like, I think all of us would agree that it would be awesome if we had a set of data sets we could use to, you know, at, at number zero, we use the Linux kernel. We use like a couple of other like key things that are just kind of our offhand things. And we try to be really public about the data sets we work with so that others can just easily grab those and compare them and run them in their own. But the real, I think this is a real collective action challenge where it's like, how do you actually get things done in a group across organizations, because we all agree it would be really nice to have those things. And Martin, you're totally right. There are just, it only gets more complex once you have some of those commonly understood stuff. So it's like, if we all just agreed, like take this exact one megabyte of data and then figure out how you're going to transfer it. Like how, the, the other thing we sort of saw in the group was we didn't even have consensus on how to measure stuff, right? And like, that's, I think, not surprising and, and felt like the beginning of a conversation not the end of one, but it became really difficult for us to advance that conversation because we didn't have a shared set of information that we were all looking at and agreeing. Like, like when we started putting up these slides of like, here's the number of messages that BitSwap sends, everyone was like, well, what's a message anyways? And we, and we, and that's a really important question. Like, what is a message? Like, <laughs> are we talking about bytes? Are we talking about packets? Are we talking about logical messages? Well, then if it's logical, logical message, like, that like, how does that compare apples to apples across protocols, right? And it felt like we got to the beginning of this really exciting conversation. And then the, the like, who's gonna do this to advance this conversation because you need to do real work to sort of get that to happen. Didn't happen. And I don't think that's anybody's fault. I think it's it, this really inherent challenge in working across organizations and figuring out as Hannah mentioned, like, you know, everybody has their own work stream and their own work to do. And like, how do you find and allocate time for a working group that like is that doesn't directly benefit your department or product? Um, so I just wanted to jump in and say like, that's, I completely agree. I want those fixtures. I want them to exist very badly. We tried to make them happen 
and sort of fell flat. And I think that's part of why we're having a sort of open conversation. So I just wanted to like let some of the how could we improve flow into this chat. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious, uh, Brendan, do you how much of that was affected by the the tools, uh, namely test ground? Uh, or and how much do you think is just inherent to this problem? Uh, I think it's inherent to the problem. It's really easy to point fingers to the tool. Um, I de we definitely got like a lot, like Asmir from our team was just, he, at one point he just turned to me, he's like, dude, we, I, I have work to do. I, you can't just come to me on Mondays and be like, I need this thing by Wednesday. And like, it's, it's just killing my capacity to get anything done for org internally. And yeah, that was like test ground is hard to set up. And we, uh, at number zero, we switched very quickly to Linux namespaces because it actually lets you simulate latency, but that's that's not the challenge the challenge is like like that's asmir's full-time job at our org like someone's full-time job is just measuring stuff and the idea that you would then do that and be able to figure out how to do that across organizations it's just like really 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 hard so i'm pretty like halfway through i switched my opinion to just being like let's establish shared nomenclature and try and figure out how we measure in a way that everyone could just publish their own benchmarks and at least we can have a conversation from there I'm curious, how do you, do you think we can get to there? Like, how do we get from here to there? Because we don't yet have a, how would we gather a set of common bench, benchmarks and or data sets? And does this problem eventually, become, like, I don't know, like if you go on like the web, there's websites that are like, what is the fastest programming language? For and like you know like you and it, it, you can find so, you know it, like the one programming language that was like I'm gonna optimize for this test uh, you know always yeah. wins yeah. Even, so yeah I'm but I think I think Martin has some like good input here because like there are other working groups that Martin that you're a part of um, that do a lot of this kind of stuff I don't know I'd, I'd be interested to hear you too my my sense is just that like people should publish what they publish and and we should all decide how to evaluate that as a community, but self-publishing is probably the only thing that I see as an option. Do you have ideas? I have ideas. Um, benchmarking is hard. Um, it is, it, especially when you, when you move past, past, the, past the obvious things. Um, it's, it's really hard to, to generate um, good data sets and good scenarios that work. So in a, in a lot of cases, and what I've what I've seen um, um, in my in my work on 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 on, um, on the quick protocol, is that the most most meaningful data you can get is is data that's actually um, obtained in production, um, where you actually use production traffic and just just measure what happens because um, that's in the end that's the, that's the traffic that you care about. You don't care about your your test data set, um, and you you include all the all the other factors that might that might not contribute to your to your benchmark. Um, of course, that makes it makes it a lot harder to um, to design and iterate quickly on on protocols if you first have to deploy it and um, get real world world data. Yeah, and in, in the Lassie project, we've kind of got we we do have load testing tools to to demo stuff ahead of time uh, just sort of like assess things ahead of time but we pri we rely primarily on production metrics of all the gateway traffic so yeah go ahead should i wait for mine yeah let, yeah let's, yeah sorry thank you yeah yeah so i guess this this that definitely feels like a good moment to ask my kind of question which is the sort of interface between the kind of work you're doing in, in this working group and, and production, right? Like there are a lot of things that I've seen today that are super exciting. I love Lassie, I love Rapide, right? And like I definitely see with that ambition to like ship this stuff and replace Bitswap um, in, in four months, right? Like there's a real strong urge to take these experiments and put them into production and get them used. Like I so saw Lassie is now one of the ways we officially say to people, like this is a good way of getting stuff from the Filecoin network. And like, I guess my question is, um, like at, at what point, uh, how do we correctly say to the rest of the world, like this is the stuff that you should use, or this is an experiment. And when I'm like playing around here, like I can download and install Lassie. Um, it's much harder for me to get repeat going, 
but like how do we define a perimeter between the experiments that you're doing here, stuff that ships, and how do we guide people uh, away from the experiments sometime and go, actually, we're not doing that anymore. That's, that's something that's archived. And, and how do we signal the stuff that comes out of the, the working group? I'm sorry, that was like a million questions. No, <laughs> that was a good one. I, I'm, I'm, uh, Brendan, do you have any thoughts on that? You guys just had a, a major shift from one architecture of a product to another. So I'm curious if you, how you handled that messaging. Yeah. Yeah, it's a toughie. Um, I think culturally, we have shied away from 1.0 in a way that hurts uh, our way to communicate, our ability to communicate with other folks. It's funny. It's funny to like see this. Like, I don't know. We, we have this culture of like 0.4, like our release of our release is 0.4.2. It's like, and, and yet we're also at the same time saying, and this is being used in Delta Chat. And like, this is like, this has like production usage. And I think that's like kind of incongruent and hard. And maybe we could just go back to like, well, if it's being used in prod, call it 1.0 and like have the courage to to like stand behind the spec you shipped, which is really hard, right? And I think that's uh, because it's totally fine to have, I, in my mind, it's this is uh, exactly the challenge. We get folks arriving at the outside of our community trying to play and use, with our, use our technology and we, we don't have like a meaningful sorting hat for like, oh yeah, go here, not there. And I've seen numerous efforts to like try and do that where you like, you know, catalog things and write documentation and say, ah, oh, go here, not there. Um, but the truth of the matter is like, we're dealing in the cutting edge of what's possible, right? Like Repeat represents an experiment in how to do really smart client side optimization. Is it a thing you should use tomorrow? I don't know, talk to Jeropo. But uh, I think the, giving users a capacity to like stuss out for themselves what they should and shouldn't be using. Yeah, I, I personally think that we should be a little, but we should make it a little more culturally okay for each other to say, no, 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 you should just, are you releasing this? Maybe we should just put a 1.0 behind this and maybe we should make it more okay to have version two, three, four, like major versions exist for a reason, right? That'd be my answer. I would add that the, the one other thing that's interesting is that in the past two years, we went from like two implementations of IPFS to like fairly, you know, sizable implementations, maybe production-ish ready um, uh, to maybe, what are we at? Like, I don't know what the number is. I don't want to say the number because I'm sure I'll get it too low. But it's at least, it's at least, we had what, like five showcases this morning and they were all IPFS implementations that were saying, use this. Um, and I think one thing that we're gonna like probably figure out over time is like messaging around, so which one and why? And like, you know, like hopefully we kind of all work together and start to recognize that our things are good at certain things and maybe not at others. Um, so yeah, I don't know. And that will also enable teams to have focus if we can all get there because I think I think Kubo has has had to be the be all and end all for everything, and it's it's sort of like you know the ma what is it jack of all trades, the master of some. <laughs> so, yeah. Other thoughts, folks? Any? By the way, like if somebody said something earlier and you want to react to it, you should feel free to. You are an expert as well. Any other any other thoughts? Things? That, yes, go ahead, DVD. I had a more technical question about the working group um, and thinking about all these different protocols that were generated and ideas. I was curious to stay on trend. Was there any work on like ML generated models? Like it feels like a lot of the data transfer protocols are based on kind of like the usage patterns in production as we were saying, like has there been any thought in that direction or are, have people thought about it? Just curious. I have a very short answer to that, but I don't know if anyone else, does anyone else actually have like a more in-depth experiment on that? Yeah. I th the Lassie protocol, the Lassie, in Lassie, the peer selection algorithm that we're working on, we're like, well, we're gonna collect a bunch of stats and make them all like exponential decay averages. And then we're gonna 
produce a weighted average for each peer, and then the way we produce the weighted average, we could just run it through a giant testing structure and a neural net, and not a neural net, an ML model until it picks the parameters. I mean, I proposed that to the team, but it was mostly as a joke because, I mean, it's very, I think partly the reason we didn't get that far, we haven't gotten that far yet, is because it, in a lot of situations, it still feels like, oh, that, that's like a, you know, like a hyper-optimization that we'll get to at the end, but it's, maybe it's not a terrible idea. Yeah, I don't know. I think that the pr ML and protocols is, a, I, maybe there are people who are doing work in it, but it seems like a relatively new kind of concept. Hmm. Sort of. The, the major CDNs have been doing this for a long time, but there's not, nothing that I know of in our space that is doing machine learning for, for, at the protocol level. I mean, I guarantee you there's some chat GPT code sneaking in here and there, but uh, it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Other thoughts? Reflections? I'm curious. Can we ask did... folks if we should keep going? Oh wait, what time is it actually? We're, we're uh, we do we have we got six minutes, so you can either have six minutes back. I do want to ask one thing, which I would love to hear from someone who either watched videos or attended the group, but is not otherwise like was not coming from a standpoint of like deeply being engaged with data transfer and what it was like for you to to attend the group and watch. Does anybody fit that description? Curious, yeah. or even midpoint. No? Okay. You're all experts. <laughs> you all think about data transfer all the time. Um, well, I kind of love the idea of giving people five more minutes, unless anyone has any clothing thoughts. Yeah. Oh, one in the back. Move the Bytes working group gave me hope. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So uh, the natural question for me is, what is next for Move the Bytes working group? That's a great question. <laughs> now, now can that we, we can I be totally we, real? Yeah. <laughs> move the Move the Bytes working group hurt my soul. And so I, I mean, it was really nice to like. I'm really happy with where we landed, but like, I, I personally feel like we should wait until we know there's like another sort of like build up of stuff to talk about um towards the end i was like sort of looking at, at scheduling the next talks and it wasn't anybody with like a burning desire to speak and for the first little while there were people with burning desires to speak like i just would have people messaging me being like I, I have a thing i want to talk about um it'd be awesome to pass the baton to somebody else have them lead the group if they want to keep going but uh from here i think it would be if if it's if the baton stays with me because nobody else wants to take it, which has happened in the past, um, I will just wait until more folks message, and then maybe we'll put up the bat signal and say, "Okay, maybe we can reconvene the group at some point, maybe towards the end of the year." That would be my my inclination. My my impression is the coordination was a good amount of work for it was you were the one who was doing work that was definitely not in your work stream. <laughs> Otherwise. Yeah, we have one. No, you were gonna volunteer, weren't you? To take it. <laughs> no, everyone's like, I'm not raising my hand anymore. Um, well, yeah, I, I think it's, I will say, I think it's, there's likely to be a hiatus. We have a lot of really awesome projects that like have sort of partially emerged from this, partially emerged from, you know, other trends, but like, uh, I think it's it'll be interesting to see where some of these projects go first. You know, I mean, I think that that you know, like, see what the like one point one dot oh version of Iro Bow Super Transfer uh, looks like. Um, uh, see what see where Lassie ends up. See where um, you know. See what the production rapid looks like, um, and see if we get some HTTP usage going around um, uh, the network. And then maybe figure out from there um, what we want to what we want to do. Um, I also think it's. It, I will say I think it's a really interesting model. I don't really know. Like 
if it applies to other, other sort of areas of the IPFS system, but like having a bunch of groups of cross orgs talking about a problem people are all struggling with for a long time and sharing their ideas. I mean, which is what we do at the conference too, but like it's useful to do it kind of apart from that and give people a little bit more time and a little bit more time to digest and consume and sort of think about things. So I don't know, maybe there needs to be the, you know, the move, the find the bites working group. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, do you have any closing thoughts, or should we wrap up and give folks a couple minutes? Um, let's let's do the break now. Yes, yeah. break now! Yay! <laughs>